Hey everyone, today I'll be introducing Boolean masks to examine and manipulate values within a NumPy array. So this concept is useful for when you want to manipulate, extract, modify, or count values within a NumPy array based on a certain criteria. So like, for example, if you wanted to count all values that are greater than a certain value, you can use this concept. Or if you want to remove values that don't meet a certain threshold, you can also use uh, this masking concept. So this masking concept is very important for all work uh, dealing with analytics and is the foundation for other libraries such as pandas. So you can follow along with me by downloading this Python notebook in the link in the description below. Uh, you can open up this notebook in either Jupyter Notebooks or in Google Labs. I have it open in Google Labs. I'll also be uploading a data set uh, that's also linked in the description below. So I'll be importing that into this Python notebook. NumPy as NP, but also pandas, uh, primarily because I want to import a data set and I wanna use a function within the pandas library to do that import. So I'm just gonna, write the import lines of code. And this is gonna be different on Jupyter Notebooks uh, in terms of importing a data set, but in Google Colabs, if you're following uh, with me on Google Colabs, this is, this is how you would import a data set into, into this Python notebook, which sits on a Google server somewhere, you know, where they have servers there. So, on the left-hand nav bar, there is this third icon that looks like a folder. Click on that. What you will see is uh, essentially the directory of that Google server. So it has sample data here if you want to use it. We're going to upload our own. So we're going to click on upload and find your file. We're going to be uploading Seattle 2014 rainfall data. So we have that CSV file here, right? So I'm just gonna click out of this real quick. And one way to just check whether or not you have the, the uh, file uploaded in the directory, uh, in your working directory, just type in this bash command ls with an exclamation mark on the left. And it's gonna just tell you all the folders and files in that fold, in your working directory. So I have it right here, Seattle 2014. So that's exactly what I want. Now I just want to import that data. So this is when I'm going to be using uh, essentially the pandas library or pandas function to do that. So I'm going to create this panda, use this function, the read CSV function, and I'm going to just copy and paste the name of that file. It needs to be enclosed in quotes. So the text should turn red. And I want to save this in a variable called rainfall. So I'm going to execute that line of code. Let's just see if it worked. Head, the head function will give me the first uh, five rows. Um, and essentially that's what I have, right? I have basically uh, the first five rows of the data frame and it has all of these columns. PRCP precipitation is Basically what I want here, I want uh, the just the amount of per precipitation by day, by station name. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to save just this row here, precipitation, in another variable that I'm gonna call inches. And so rainfall here, I'm gonna grab PRCP. And um, I know that this data set actually is, um, I, I want to convert it into inches. So I'm going to divide it by 254.0. And then I'm going to see what the shape is. I should have. 365. So I have 365 values. That's, you know, one measurement of rainfall for every day in the year. 
and it's totally fine if you don't understand really any of this this is a lot of pandas work um, so you may or may not know pandas so in the notebook I basically already have this all written out for you so it's just we're just importing the data we're doing some manipulation on the data and then we're saving the values that we're interested in in a variable called inches so I have all this written out as well. I just want to visualize the data. We're going to use a plotting function called matplotlib. And I just want to see what the data distribution looks like. So the data is just showing that um, the majority of the time you don't see any rainfall in Seattle. So the x axis here with zero on the left is just showing basically the number of days where there weren't any rainfall. The y axis is the number of days. So, you know, the reputation of Seattle is that it rains all the time. This data is showing otherwise. At least in 2014, it didn't rain as much. All right, so we have imported the data. We saved the pre precipitation data in a variable called in inches. And then we just, we plotted inches just to see what the, that data looks like. All right, so now let's just cover comparative functions. This is, this is very important in terms of understanding how to uh, perform Boolean mass and how to create Boolean mass. You're going to be using a lot of comparative or comparison operators. So let's just go through each comparator operator that, that we have in NumPy. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's just create a NumPy array. And let's do a pretty simple one. All right, it's just one through five. And so I'm gonna print out X. It's exactly what we think it's gonna be. So if I essentially wanted to just, just uh, pick the, the, the values that are less than three, what I can do is use a comparator operator less than, right? And so this is, less than what I get out of that is essentially what we call a boolean array and a boolean is a data type of true or false and so here you see that where the position is, should be one or where the value should be one we get a true because our comparator operator is say is basically saying uh, for if, if x is less than three say true right or give the value true and so that's why for for the value one you have true for the value two you have true and then three is false four is false five is false so that's a pretty easy comparison and so what we're going to do now is just go through a few others so obviously this is the opposite of less than which is greater than and i get the opposite array values and then I could also do less than or equal to less than or equal. And I should get a true right here on the on value number three. Um, I can do basically the opposite of that. I get true, true, true on the right hand side. Um, this one's actually really important. It's a not equal. If I want to say something is not equal to a certain specific value, I should get false for the middle value here, which is three. So like, you know, X is not three is basically what it's, what's, what it's saying. Um, and then the opposite of that is X equals three, right? So uh, where is X equal to three? And I use a double equal sign because if I use, if I just used a single equal sign, it, it actually will replace three. It'll replace all the values in the array with just three. So I'm just gonna have basically X equals three, which is not what I want. I don't wanna replace values in the array. I wanna just do comparisons. So you have to use a double equal sign to do comparisons. So what I get there is basically one true right in the middle in the third position there, which is what I'm expecting. So you can even um, compound these expressions and string them together. So if we wanted to do maybe like an expression where 
we're saying, um, you know, multiply the array by two. Um, is that array going to be equal to if I square the array by two? And it's saying basically not, not for any of the values except when the value is one because the, if you don't remember the array right here, oh, I'm sorry, when the value is two. So, so when the, when you multiply two times two, that's four. Is that equal to two to the power of two? Yes, because that's also four, but that's not true t with, uh, with the other values here. All right, so you can do that. You can string together and compare two arrays. Um, just for your reference, these are the comparator operators uh, just listed out here. So you don't have to go to the documentation if you don't want to. You can just refer to this Python notebook. So it's very important to download this if you want this reference. Um, and just in case it's not obvious, we can, we can also do all of this uh, comparisons with two-dimensional, multi-dimensional arrays. So just, just as an example, what I'm gonna do is I'll just create a um, multi-dimensional array. I'm gonna use the random int function to create a three by four array. All right, so then I'm going to, uh, so I seeded it with a zero so that if you run this, we also get the same values. And so if I get an array like this, and I just wanted to uh, find the values that are less than six, like how would I do that? Pretty simple, exactly this, the same way as how I did it above, it's just X less than six, right? And so anywhere the value is less than six, you'll get a true, just like this, zero is less than six, yes, it's true. Anywhere the value is greater than six, you'll get a, a false, so like the seven right here uh, corresponds to this false right here, all right? So we can do these comparison operators on single dimensional NumPy arrays as well as multi-dimensional arrays. So now, let's... so now let's look at Boolean arrays as masks or actual masking. So that's the point of this video right here. That's the point of the concept. But now that we've learned uh, these operators, we can actually put these operators to use. So what I wanna do is I want to use the exact same array that I just built. And then I want some, essentially some, some logic. I want basically just to return all the values less than five, right? So this is what we learned above. That doesn't give me the values, right? So I have all the values up here, as you can see in this output. And all I have are Boolean values here, which is just true and false. So I don't actually know any of the values that are less than five, unless I kind of kind of map this out one to one. Like I have to go, I have to have these two outputs and then see basically which ones are less than five, right? So, but there has to be an easier way to just get that output. And so this is the masking operation that allows you to get those numbers uh, basically immediately. So what we're gonna basically do is combine uh, this line of code with this line of code and just uh, wrap it in this syntax. Okay, so it's just saying x brackets x less than five. And I'm getting a single dimensional array, just one line, uh, one line with numbers. All of these numbers are less than five, right? So. These are the numbers that are less than five in the array of X. And that's exactly uh, what we wanted. And so that is what Boolean masks allow you to do is just uh, grab certain numbers based off of, an, off of logic. So 
What we're gonna do now is let's run through uh, an example using the data set that we just uploaded, the uh, Seattle 2014 data set. So again, um, let's look at the values that, that we're interested in. And above, you saw that I was interested in the inches variable here. So the inches variable is basically the per precipitation level, the rainfall level of every day of the year. And so on the left-hand side, I have zero to 364, which is 365 days. And on the right-hand side here is essentially the, the, the rainfall in inches, all right, for that particular day. So I'm gonna construct one mask uh, that I'm gonna call rainy. So rainy is going to give us all the days where there was rain. So if I wanted to essentially find the days and the per precipitation level, uh, where where it rained and basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say like inches greater than zero. So that just means that I want uh, values that are greater than zero because those are going to be the rainy days, right? It has to be gr greater than zero. The, the rainfall level has to be greater than, than zero for it to be a rainy day. So uh, what I did here is construct a mask of all rainy days. Let's just look at what that looks like. I, it's basically a, a Boolean mass uh, of true and falses, right? So it's basically saying the first day of the year, it did not rain. The uh, second day of the year, it did rain, right? That's, that's, all what, that's all we want. So with just that, what I can even do is I can figure out what the median precipitation level was on rainy days in 2014, right? So if I wanna know um, the median number of inches it rained on only rainy days, I can calculate that. So what I can do now is uh, create or use uh, the median function, right? Uh, on inches using the Boolean mask that I just created called rainy. Does this make sense? So basically using the median function, which calculates median, I have now um, all the, uh, I, I have to put in the data set. And so the data set is inches, which is uh, essentially all, all the days in a year in 2014 and the rainfall level. And I just wanna isolate it to rainy days. So I have this Boolean mass here that I created above which just isolates the rainy days. Um, and rainy days are defined as whenever there's rainfall greater than zero on that particular day. So if I do this, let's see what I get. So the median level of rainfall for rainy days was 0.19 inches of rain. So that, that makes sense to me. Uh, what I could also do is let's just uh, let me comment this out and let me just look at the actual raw data just to make sure that we're kind of seeing what we think we're seeing. So what's important here is I'm not seeing any zeros because I have this Boolean mass here and this logic saying like, you know, um, remove all days that are zero. And so that's true. And so when I, when I use this uh, Boolean mass here and couple it with the, all, the entire array of, of rainfall for all days in 2014, this is why, what, what I get. And this makes sense to me. So I'm gonna get rid of this and just have this. And so what I'm also going to do is just type in the comments median precipitation or precip on rainy days in 2014 and it's in inches all right so we're going to do that so i'm going to go through one more example or i'm going to create one more boolean mass and uh, what i want to do is just construct the mass that has all the summer days so i'm gonna 
remove all the other days that are, are not summer from this from this uh, array. And so summer days, I will denote as June 21st, which is the 172nd day of the year. So I'm gonna create um, an, uh, a NumPy array with 365 values. So I'm gonna call them days. Okay, so if I just output days, it's just a array from zero to 364 to represent all the days in the year. And now what all I really wanna do now is I just want the summer days. So I want uh, starting at 172 and let's see, uh, June 21st is the, is the start of summer on the 172nd day and ending on the 262nd day, 162nd day, all right? So if I wanted to just go and have, just create a NumPy array from 172 to 262, this is what I'd do. I'd use my days, array and pick days that are greater than 172 and then I will use this and operator select days that are less than 262 does that make sense so if I basically have this logic here it picks out days that are greater than 172 this logic picks out days that are less than 262 and this and operator puts them together so if I just output this, I get the beginning winter months or winter days as false. This is true right here, which is in the middle, which is summer, and then fall and, and winter also will be false. And that's exactly what I want. And so I'm gonna save this in a variable called summer. Whoops. Okay, in a variable called summer. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create a few create create a few um, I guess functions uh, create a few and answer a few questions. So like one question I, I would have is uh, maybe what I would want to do is figure out the median precipitation on summer days, right? So it would be very similar similar to this one up here. So what I want to do is find the median precip on summer days in 2014 in inches. So how would I do that? Very similar to this one up here, which is really calling the median function, or actually before we even do that, let's just look at the data itself. Uh, so what I want is to use the inches array, which contains the days and the, the amount of rainfall. And then I'm gonna use the Boolean mass summer so that I just isolate the rainfall um, on summer days. And so if I execute off on that line of code, I, I get basically just the summer days, which should be above 172 and minus 262, which is correct. This also includes the zeros, which is fine because we just want to know the average number of rainfall, the average amount of rainfall during summer days. So zeros is totally fine. Um, and so if I want to find the median of that, it's really just calling the numpy median function and putting that data set inside that function. So zero is the median number, which makes sense to me because it probably doesn't, um, it probably doesn't rain a lot in the summer. So another thing I can do, because that's not very helpful, is actually find the max precipitation, the, the largest amount of rainfall in the summer of 2014. So let me just write the comment. All right, and in order to do this, it's kind of the same thing, but so I'm just gonna copy and paste, and I'm gonna use the max function instead of the median function. 
So if I do that, I find that uh, the, the, the amount of rainfall, the maximum around, amount of rainfall during summer was 0.85 inches. So there's a single day where it rained 0.85 inches um, in the summer of 2014. All right, so how about if we wanted to answer the question, well, what was the median amount of rainfall on non-summer rainy days? So just to write that out, the median precipitation level on non-summer rainy days. So we've created the Boolean maths for these. So let's just recall what we've created. We've, we've created um, the, the inches or the inches, which is basically uh, where our values lie. We also created the rainy Boolean mass, which is basically all of the rainy days. And then we've created uh, the summer Boolean mass, which uh, isolates all the summer days. But what, it's, what this is asking is non-summer days, right? And so in order to get non-summer days, all we need to do is put this tilde sign right there, which just inverts the trues to the and the falses. So all the trues would be falses and all the falses would be trues. So that would give us non-summer days. And if we want rainy days, we have it here, right? But we need to couple them together somehow. And above in earlier in the, in the video, I introduced this and symbol. So if I say rainy days and non-summer days, that's exactly what I get, non-summer rainy days. So I'm gonna put this inside brackets and I'm gonna basically call our data set that has all the values uh, of rainfall, which is inches, all right? So let's just run this line of code to see what we get. Uh, we do get non-summer days, so it, we can see that with the, the day value here. This is winter and this is also winter, so January and December months. And rainy, we know this is true because there are no zeros. Every, everything is above zero, so it, it rained. So this is the right data set that we want to uh, find the median of. And so in order to find the median, it's just NP median and then putting this data within the function, within the parentheses, and we get 0.2, all right? So that's an example of how to string together multiple Boolean arrays 